Hello, everyone. This is Ben Ocho from Kyushu Institute of Technologies. It is my pleasure to give you a lecture of the KiboCube Academy. Uh, today's lecture is about CubeSat for capacity buildings. These are the contents of today. First, I can give you the reference. You can download this textbook. This is well suited uh, if you want to start a CubeSat project. The book is based on our experience of BART's project. It can be downloaded freely from this uh, web address, from this address. So before moving further, let me introduce myself. I have been working at the Kyushu Institute of Technologies, QTEC in short, uh, since 2004. Originally, my research area was spacecraft charging, but nowadays, I'm more interested in the satellites it is another way of calling small satellites. These are the pictures of satellite. Uh, I have been in the principal investigator since 2012. So far, 19 satellites have been launched into space. Okay, uh, now let's talk about the uh, demand for capacity building. This is a list of countries who launched CubeSat as the first national satellite up to 2020. Most of them are 1U CubeSat. You can find also some KiboCube satellite, such as number 18. Number 18 Kenya and number 26 are from Guatemala. The satellite launched in 2020 are not listed here yet. But we know that Mauritius successfully launched its first satellite as a cable cube number three. As you know, small satellites are ideal entrance for developing countries to join the space sectors because it is simple and affordable. Therefore, there is a demand for capacity building through small satellites. Various training programs by agencies, companies, and universities uh, in space-faring countries uh, exist. They are often tied with sales of satellite, big or small satellite. But they are not always successful, especially if the training is done in agency or company. There are many reasons, but I think the major reasons are the uh, lack of hands-on experience and not covering the entire system life cycles of satellite. So I think the key point for success for capacity building programs is to experience the complete cycle of designing, building, testing, and operating through hands-on. So complete cycle and hands-on is important. And having strategy for sustainability Sustainability is also very important uh, keyword. So let me introduce you the capacity building act activities at QTEC. At QTEC, we have a postgraduate uh, program called Space Engineers International Course. In short, it is called uh, SEIC. It started in April 2013. It is made of four peers research toward a master or doctor degree, on-the-job trainings such as space environment testing workshop, project-based learnings through a space project, and space-related lectures in English. The SEIC was started to support the growing number of students coming under PNST programs. I'll explain PNST in the next slide. PNST is a short name of Postgraduate study on nanosatellite technologies, which is run at the UN Japan uh, Long Term Fellowship Programs. It is a part of UN USA Basic Space Technology Initiative since 2011. 2011, the doctor on nanosatellite technologies, a DNST, uh, started at the QTEC. We accepted the two doctoral students. In 2013, it was expanded to two masters and four doctors each year under support of Japanese government, and uh, we changed the name to PNST. 
Since 2018, PNST is running second and third terms, which accept three masters and three doctors in each year. So please note that applications for 2022 October admission is now running. The deadline is January 10th over 2022. Okay. This is a composition of SEIC students that includes PNST fellowship students. Over nine years since 2013, more than 100 foreign students from 42 countries enrolled. This is quite a diverse educational program. In 2013, the year we started SEIC, we also initiated our own third satellite project which is called 44. The satellite project was quite international. We had 44 members from 18 countries. In this group photo, you recognize very few Japanese uh, students. In 2015, a university president from Ghana visited QTEC. We already had one student from universities. He wanted to send two more and came to see how we are actually doing in Japan. We went to a dinner that night and the idea for international satellite project was born over the dinner. It is BIRDS program. It is a satellite program for non-space-faring countries. The mission statement is the following. By successfully building and operating half national satellite, make the foremost step toward indigenous space programs at each nation. In these programs, every year we, re <coughs> we release a constellation of one UQ flag from ISS. The BUS program is made of a series of one UQ flag constellation. BUS one is made of five satellites by Bangladesh, Ghana, Japan, Mongolia, and Nigeria. BUS two is made of three satellites by Bhutan, Malaysia, Philippines. BUS three is made of three by Japan, Sri Lanka, Nepal. But four is made of three by Japan, Philippines, and Paraguay. Currently, we are building but five. They are made of three satellites by Japan, Zimbabwe, and Uganda. Here, uh, the country listed in blue launched or will launch the first satellite for each country. The satellites are made by students at SEIC, QTEC. Each project is two years from concept design to disposal. Once released from ISS, the satellites are operated by a network of multiple ground stations. We want to fit each satellite project into two years because the master program in Japan is two years. A short-term goal of the program is to build and operate a satellite. It gives the students confidence that they can do it. However, the long-term goal is that students initiate their own space programs in home countries. So the full mission success of the BART programs is that the former student successfully build and operate the second satellite in their home countries. To achieve that goal, we let the student to learn entire process of satellite project from beginning to end. We do not teach students how to solder the electronic parts. But we let the student witness each decision process and make decisions by themselves. The entire process must fit into two years because the master program in Japan is two years. Then we selected one new CubeSat and ISS launch as the platforms. We admit that what one new CubeSat can do is limited, but it is more important to gain the confidence and experience as a first step. Now I'd like to talk about CubeSat project timeline based on our experience of, of buzz programs. This is the time flow of each buzz project. From kickoff in October, we go to operation at the end of the second year. First, let me talk about first three months from the kickoff to the mission definition review. In the first three months, 
students do not touch on hardware. We go through the intensive process of mission definition and satellite configuration designs. Important point is that do not make a satellite that you want. Make a satellite that people want. Then we go through the three steps to define the mission requirement from top to bottom. The top is student asks themselves, what do country, people, society, economy, and others need? In this process, space is not relevant. They do ranking of the needs identified. The needs can be agriculture, energy, mining, fishing, society, security, and, and every, anything. The student prioritizes the needs, and after this, we go to the second step. The student think about each need, whether the space can solve the problem. It can be done by a big satellite, small satellite, by any means. It can be done by combinations with ground or air assets, and they are also okay. Space can be only part of the overall solutions. That's important to understand that point. Lastly, the students think whether they can use CubeSat as a solution. It can be direct solutions, or if CubeSat capability is limited, it can be demonstration of technologies, or it can be proof of concept. So we go through this process at the beginning, and no need to touch any hardware in this process. This is a case of BUDS-5 mission definition process. There are various needs in Zimbabwe and Uganda, from poverty, health, to mining or water. Then the drinking water was considered. Water quality monitoring, water quality monitoring uh, is important. Yes, it can be done by a big satellite like this one, but even one U CubeSat can provide data to familiarize data analysis and the distributions domestically. So we selected this uh, water uh, quality monitoring. Okay, uh, so mission is defined. Then we think about how do we do the mission. Students are supposed to write the mission scenario. Then they have to think that is a mission scenario feasible by one UQ set? What component do we need? Do we buy the component or make them ourselves? Can all the components fit into one U volumes? And uh, going through these questions and answers, the students draw the satellite system block diagrams and uh, 3D CAD models. Once the mission is designed, and uh, satellite configuration is more or less defined. We move to the satellite development phase. First, the student has to obtain the proof of concept. They need to make sure that the missions are possible by checking with actual hardware as much as possible. They also do detailed satellite design before making the prototype of engineering models. After we become a sort of confident the mission we think is feasible, we move to the state, we make a prototype and do intensive testing of the designs of the system. We make a prototype called engineering models. Using that one, we verify that the satellite system's designs is good by checking its functionalities and environment durabilities. We uncover interface incompatibility issues, but please do not forget software development and the ground stations during this time. The project will go through safety review phase 012 before moving to flight models. This process takes at least one month. Once the system design is verified, the project now moves to build our flight models. We make a flight models and verify based on assembly document 
testing procedures. We make sure that the satellite was built correctly with what workmanship flows or material flows. So please do not forget about software testing. We run flight software as long as possible. There is also safety review phase three uh, before delivery. It takes at least one month also. There is several months from the time when the satellite is delivered to the, to the actual deployment from ISS. You shouldn't waste uh, this time by taking vacation. The students prepare for the satellite operation. They need to make sure that the satellite can be operated from day one. To do so, they need to have mission operation plans. Also, they need to do ground station operation practice. Also, it is a good time to do lessons learned for satellite building. It is also a very good time to think about the next satellite. Finally, the satellite is deployed from ISS. You enter into the operation, operation phase. The critical point in the operations is to establish the communication link. You need to be successful both in uplink and downlink. Once you establish the link, I strongly suggest you do the main mission first because the satellite can fail anytime. So do not wait for a good day. So you have to plan ahead and when you do the mission. So once you confirm satellite is okay, do the main mission. Yes, I, I really strongly suggest. Also, once the satellite is deployed, you need to disseminate information about satellite status frequently. Key points are outreach and let your country know that satellite is working. Let me talk about sustainability. You may have obtained Kibo Kibo slot and the satellite was built and operated successfully. But it is not the end of the story. CubeSat, a Kibo Cube, may be your country's first satellite, but it must not be the last satellite. Do not lose the momentum acquired with the first satellite. The most important, retain the people who experience the first satellite. After all, the human resource is the most important in small satellite development. You should know that second satellite will face the challenge of funding, less enthusiasm, and other things. To overcome, you need to tell your country the space solutions are necessary and reachable. You need to plan, ahead. You need to plan how to learn sustainable space programs. You need to establish a long-term view of how the space programs will benefit people in your country. This is the reason why the mission of the first satellite is important. You also need to secure the anticipations of various stakeholders. You need to set up the mechanisms to correct, discuss, prioritize the needs of various stakeholders. You also need to do sound judgment of technical and uh, financial feasibility. Whether you can do the sound judgment or not depends on the human resource you have. After Cubo Cube, you think about the next satellite. I should say it is not a good idea to attempt giant leap. This is a huge gap in system complexity from here to here. Instead, I strongly recommend to proceed step by step and continuously. The important thing is not to lose the momentum. You have to keep the ball, you have to keep the ball rolling. When you think of a satellite project, I suggest you to think as the programs, not as a project. In both programs, we keep the launching CubeSat in a series and learn from operation space. Then you can reflect lessons into the next generation and improve overall reliability each time. You accumulate experience in humans. No matter how good you write the document, 
the document cannot be better than human experience. Also, the networking is important. In Buzz programs, we are forming a network called Buzz Network. When a new Buzz project is started, the new member institutions are supposed to start their own space programs to continue after Buzz. Two kinds of network is important. Human network and ground station network. The network can assist infant space programs on a mutual basis. I'd like to introduce two cases of former Buzz program uh, of former Buzz graduate in Mongolia. Two former Buzz students are working as a faculty member. They already started CubeSat project. In Bangladesh, also two former Buzz students are working in the universities and started university space programs. Before moving to conclusions, I'd like to present frequent asked questions from those who want to start a CubeSat project. The frequent asked question number one, how do we get funding? The answer is to use your imaginations and be innovative. Don't worry for the country's first satellite. You can expect multiple support. You can ask the government, universities, university alumni, private sponsors, crowdfundings and donations. You need to have a good mission to get funding. Just saying this is our country's first satellite is not a comparing case. So having a good mission, having a good mission from the first one is critical for moving to the second satellite. Question number two, we don't have any test, testing facility. Where do we test? The answer is concentrate on testing items, which are really necessary. In uh, lecture 15, I'll mention the following set, seven test items. You should be able to do number one to number four in your country. Number five to seven can be done in Japan uh, before final delivery. And find the vacuum chambers uh, in your countries, check your university physics department, for example. I suggest that you shake the satellite component with your own hands if you fold it by yourself or use a cable made by yourself. That can reveal many uh, failures, uh, hidden in those folding even by hand shaking. Question number three, should we purchase commercial off-the-shelf COTS component or make everything by ourselves? I suggest you to buy COTS component for the basic satellite bus, such as computer, radio, power systems, and concentrate on mission payload development. When you buy comp COTS component, I strongly advise to buy from a single vendor, as the software interface issues can delay the project significantly. After all, each component must communicate each other by software. But if the vendors are different, software may not be compatible. So you may have lots of difficulties when you integrate. Also choose the stuff that have flight heritage. And I also suggest you to buy two sets. One set is for flight, the other set is for engineering models, which can serve as a flat sphere and also as a flat fat models uh, during operations to check uh, the command or to check any anomalies you experience in orbit. So final conclusion. I say one U CubeSat is an ideal tool for entry into space. For capacity buildings, Going through the entire process of the satellite system life cycle is important. It is from mission definitions to the operation in space. So please, please remember that the first satellite must not be the last satellite. Think of sustainability at all the times. Thank you very much.